Friday night weekend. Hello! Thank you. So, uh, if you haven't, please come grab your card. We'll use those in a minute. Couple things coming up. Quiz one now available on Moodle due 9 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, you will get immediate feedback when you attempt it. You can attempt it any number of times. Uh, you can use late days on the quiz, but I have to kind of manually put in extensions on Moodle. So if you'd like to use a late day, send me an email uh, to extend the deadline 24 hours. Uh, quiz is practicing the ideas we've been talking about with bytes in, in memory and little endian and uh, pointers. Uh, using kind of the, one of those grid diagrams that we looked at last couple classes. Um, uh, you can ask uh, me questions about the quiz or ask lab assistants questions about the quiz. That is fine. Um, Wednesday, 9 p.m., the Lab Zero check-in form post is due. number of great questions and discussion there already. Uh, and then Lab Zero itself is due a week from today, 9 p.m. Yeah. Uh, for the Lab Zero, it says to turn in the uh, just Q.C file. Is that correct, or can we turn in the handed not tar file that gets created? Uh, so in previous versions of the Lab, you are asked to make small changes to Q.C. You don't need to in this version, so you can just hand in, uh, sorry, Q.H. Uh, but you shouldn't need to make any changes to that this time, so you can just hand in. Q. Um, but yes, when you make it, it does produce handout handin.tar, which has q.c and q.h, but we only need q.c. Um, all right, so that, that's what's coming up. Uh, it is springtime, and so I just wanted to share this picture of a, uh, a red breasted nuthatch, which uh, is burrowing into uh, what will hopefully be a nest in this uh, in this snag. This is uh, right outside my my parents' kitchen window, so they are really hoping the the bird decides to to make a home there this spring. Um, uh, I know that there are plenty of questions on the lab, and we're going to spend uh, most potentially all of today talking about C and. Uh, pointers and, and stuff that will be useful in the lab, and we'll see if we, we get to any of the integer representation stuff, or just leave that for Wednesday. Are there uh, any questions uh, not related to, to the lab? Uh, okay, let's start. Alright, let's do a little bit of review then uh, about Strings in C. How many bytes would it take to represent the string Strange Love? Dr. Strange Love, one of my favorite films, but just the string Strange Love. Uh, how many bytes would that take? All right, lots of votes for D, but some for, for B and C. Please discuss with your neighbors uh, why you chose the answer you did. Big movement toward D, that is uh, excellent. That's uh, how many bytes this will take. Can someone uh, share with us uh, why you chose, how you got to 12? Okay. Uh, you need 11 for the word, and then you have another byte for the null terminator. Exactly. We have 11 letters up there, plus one for the null terminator. Does that make sense? All right. So I want to just start uh, coding up an example here. Uh, and I'm doing it on uh, pythontutor.com, uh, but not about Python. Is if I go to pythontutor.com, there's a choice to go to C Tutor, and we're working in C. Uh, does this font need to be larger? Can people in the back? Okay, awesome. So uh, I want to kind of start working up an example uh, related to our our queue using a linked list, and so. Uh, 
when I have a uh, node and a linked list, kind of what stuff goes inside of a linked list node? Yes, here. Uh, you have a static portion and then you have the address to the next node. Yeah, we need a value and some reference to the next node in the list inside each node. Uh, and at this point, we want sort of a single value in C that has kind of two parts inside of it. Uh, and up until this point, we've seen like integers, like just one number inside, or arrays that have a bunch of things of the same type. But now we have things that are of different types. And so in an object-oriented language like Java or Python, we might create a class that has kind of a value and an X. C is not an object-oriented language, but we have something close called a struct, short for structure, which is like an object, but no methods, only a set of fields that are kind of now going to be grouped together in memory. So I can say, I want a struct that I'll call node. And inside this struct node, I just give the type and name of all the kind of parts of that struct. So I'm going to have a string that I'll call value, car star, a bit of syntax. Whether you put the star there, or like this, or no space, that doesn't, C does not care. So it's kind of purely personal preference where you put the star relative uh, to the type and the variable name. I tend to do it like the textbook does, put the star next to the variable name, but you don't have to do it that way. Uh, but I'm going to have a string that's a value, and then a pointer to another one of these structs. That's my kind of reference to the next node uh, in the list. Uh, does that make sense? Questions on declaring this struct? All right, so that's my node, uh, but I'm also going to want a uh, something to keep track of my, my queue. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to make it really simple and just have a head. In the lab, we have a tail and a size, but for this, just going to be a reference to the first node uh, in the list. So I'll say struct q is going to have a struct node pointer head. All right, so I actually have defined these inside the main function, which is not where they should be. They appear outside the function. Sorry about that. Uh, well, that's not ideal. Trying to unindent them, and it did not work. Now, struct Q with a struct node star head. All right, so then in my main function, uh, which is when I have a C program, the main function is kind of where the program will start. Uh, executing like the, the main method in Java. And I am just going to declare something of type struct q. I'm going to call it q, my variable name, and just say, okay, there's going to be one of these uh, in the main function. Uh, and I'm going to have a array of 10 characters is going to be holding a string, because I'm going to be putting strings into uh, 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 into my uh, queue. Then I'm going to use the C library function, str copy, string copy. And to use this function, I first give it the car star that is the destination, where I'm copying something to. So I want to fill in this string, str, with the string fungi. Uh, 
And after I do that, I want to add that string to the queue. So I haven't defined this queue add function yet, but kind of this is the, the setup to, uh, to, to get me there. Uh, questions on this so far? Yeah. Uh, for these here? Yeah. So, as we'll see in a moment, there is memory allocation going on. And in fact, they will have space automatically allocated for them. Um, and this is one of the main things that is going, I think, is going to come out of this example is that there's some allocation that happens automatically and some that we do manually, and they have different properties. Uh, and that's going to determine when we want to use one uh, versus the other. Yeah, Nick? Uh, what happens to the last four bytes of memory in your string? Uh, like, do they, get, do they get filled or do they get left empty? Or... Uh, that is a great question. We will see kind of visually what happens uh, once, once we run through this. Um, so let me just add in the, the queue. Uh, it's not a, the queue add method doesn't return anything, so I put its return type as void, and it's called queue add, and it takes a struct queue, and it takes a car star uh, that I'll call s. And at this point, I'm getting a little tired of writing struct queue, struct queue, struct queue everywhere, so I'm going to use another kind of a nice thing that uh, C lets me do, which is just to rename one type to have kind of give it an alias, give it another name I can call it. Uh, and I do that by saying type def. Um, I think I don't actually need to have it be part of that, but so the way that you'll see it in the lab is type def definition of the struct followed by the name that I want, the alternate name that I want for that type. So now I have given struct q, the alternate name, capital Q, and so I can just use that anywhere that I would want struct q. So it's basically sort of like an automatic kind of find and replace when my code gets compiled, it's going to find all these capital q, uh, q's and actually fill in struct q, but I can use the more convenient name when I'm actually writing the code. So, when I'm adding this, uh, I want to add a new node uh, to my queue. So I'm first going to give my node struct a capital N node name so that here I can just say, okay, we're going to have a new node N. Its next is going to be null so that there is kind of nothing that comes after this this new node, its value is going to be s, the string that I passed in, and uh, then kind of if there's already a node at the head of the queue, um, so uh, an aside, uh, booleans in C, Zero is interpreted as false. Null is uh, uh, the same as the value zero. And literally any other value that's not zero, interpreted as true. Uh, and so this, if q.head is an, an idiom you'll see commonly in C, it's sort of short for if q head does not equal null. Right? If it's anything other than zero, it will be true. And so I can just check is the value of this q head, is the value of this pointer zero? Is it null? Or is it anything else? Right? With an if statement like this. So if there's already a head, then the new head that I'm, the new node that I'm adding at the head will, its next will refer to the existing head. Uh, and then q.head is the address of n. Why?
couldn't I, in this case, say q dot head equals n? Yeah, why, wh why wouldn't these types match? Q.head needs to be a pointer. Yeah, I've declared Q.head has a pointer to a node, n is a node, and so I, want, I need to get the address of n to get a pointer to that node to assign it here. Uh, so let's just look and see what this looks like. Oh, it's not going to be happy because null, in order to get access to null, I need to include... Uh, the standard lib group of functions and other definitions, that's where capital N uh, ULL is defined. So this hopefully will work now. All right, so first thing that I want to call your attention to is that over here on the right, uh, there's kind of two regions of memory. There's stack and there's heap. And what I can see is I get through these first two declarations of Q and this STR, these two variables have been automatically allocated. The memory for them has been automatically allocated on the stack. So. The stack is managed automatically. And in particular, the reason that it can be done automatically is that things that are allocated on the stack are known at compile time. Like when this code was compiled, the compiler could tell, okay, you have declared this local variable that's this Q struct, you've declared this local variable that's an array of 10 characters, and it can kind of build into the program this automatic allocation uh, for, this, for this data. Uh, to uh, Nick's question about what happens to the, the other characters here, uh, when Right now, all these question marks, they are uninitialized data, meaning that we have just literally no idea what's there. It could be any value. Because when this memory is allocated, no initialization is performed. Meaning that whatever is in those bytes is whatever the last thing that was written to those bytes is. Maybe it's zero, maybe it's other stuff we just don't know. Which means that when we copy things over, we copy over fungi and old terminator, and the last four characters just remain unknown mystery data. But since our string ends with an old terminator, we don't have to care what's in those kind of extra bytes. Questions on this so far? Kevin. Um, is there ever a time when we need to like? directly manage the pointer that you're going like doing um, address or something to get the next one? Other than like doing the uh, is Your question is, do we ever need to do pointer arithmetic? Yes. Uh, absolutely, but uh, not in lab zero. But yes, we'll, we'll see many instances where uh, uh, and, and pointer arithmetic is, is something that we'll, we'll talk about uh, later in this term kind of when, when it becomes necessary. Uh, all right, so then we get into Q add. And we see again uh, a few things have happened. One is that uh, our local variable node n has been automatically allocated on the stack. But something else has happened because C is a language that uses what's called and not related to the stack and heap differences, but pass by value. 
which means that whenever we pass something to a function, it just copies whatever that is. Which means that when I passed q to this q add, what it did was copy the struct. And so I now have a, a local copy of the qstruct that's been automatically put on the stack for qadd, and it's totally separate from, it's just a copy of, of the one that existed in main. So if I step through this now, this pointer that I passed in, s, it is a copy of this pointer str. Uh, and so both str and s uh, are the address of this first byte where the f is stored. I fill in null for the next. I fill in uh, s for the value of the node, so it now also is the address of this first character of the string. Q dot head is. Uh, uh, I actually forgot to set that to null, so we're going to see what happens. Uh, Ctutor says it depends on uninitialized values and refuses to go forward. But uh, without the kind of extra safety checks that uh, Ctutor is doing, it would be it would read whatever happened to be at this pointer, whether it was um, uh, uh, Null or not, so I'm going to need to go and fix that. Q dot head equals null. <clears throat> and get back to where we were. And so at the end of my Q dot add, I have updated the copy of my Q struct to have its head point to this uh, node that was created here, and then when q.add returns, everything that was on its stack is automatically deallocated. So q.add, unfortunately, this version of it had literally no effect on the queue. I passed in the queue, it made a copy of it, it made some changes to that copy, and then got rid of the copy. Questions on kind of this attempt at queue you add? Yeah, I'm sorry. So it was confused like in the main function, like mm -hmm. there was no malloc for like Q, Q. I was wondering like how could it still exist? Uh, it existed because if I kind of declare it as a local variable, uh, it will be automatically allocated on the stack. Um, and so that's fine for this main function, um, but as we'll see, if I uh, want to, um, uh, if I wanted something like a q new function that was going to produce a new q struct, uh, declaring as a local variable uh, would not be a good idea, and we'll see, we'll see why. Other questions? Yeah. So when you declare like cast or the, the, the array, mm -hmm. so that's the next star is a pointer rather than a variable. So uh, this line here says, all right, we're going to have a stack allocated array of 10 characters. Um, and as I mentioned last time, a variable that's an array is exactly the same thing as a variable that is a pointer to the first element of the array. There's actually not really any difference between these two things in C. Uh, so Yes, this str is a, a pointer. Um, and uh, yes, the str is a, a pointer to the first uh, uh, the first byte of, of the array. So I'm going to try and fix some things about this q add. Uh, most importantly, I don't want to make a copy of the Q struct. I want to actually be able to change the one Q struct that exists. So I'm going to pass in a pointer to the struct. So instead of making a copy of the whole struct, I make a copy of the address where the struct is stored, and then I can use that address to, to change the actual struct. We'll see what that looks like visually. 
Um, and so with this, uh, now I can't use this dot notation now that Q is a pointer. I can use the dot to access the field of a variable that's the actual struct, but once I have a pointer, C is going to tell me we, like the type of a pointer doesn't have like this dot operator that I can apply to it. So for each of these, I could dereference the pointer to get the actual struct and then use the dot. Um, so this would work. This, this would compile. But like this dereference and parentheses everywhere, it's kind of messy, it makes the code a little harder to read. So C has uh, just a completely equivalent uh, operation, but with some nicer syntax, where if I want to get the field of it where I have a pointer to a struct, I can use kind of dash greater than, or this like arrow operator to Q is now a pointer to a struct, and I can kind of dereference the pointer, and then you do dot head kind of all at once using this, this arrow operator. So that is almost always what you'll, what you'll see when there are pointers to structs. All right, so now I'm passing in a pointer to Q. Um, and what would I need to change about this line 27 in main to kind of make this make this work. Okay. Um, pass in, so is that passing in the value in the graph the the Exactly. I need to pass in the address of my queue because I want to pass in a pointer to it rather than passing in the struct itself and having having a whole copy of that name. So let's see what this looks like. Same as before, we copy, we add, uh, but now instead of a whole struct here, it's just a pointer to the original struct, have this node uh, fill in its value, same as before, set the head of this to point to the node that I made. Uh, so the head of the actual uh, Q struct has been, has been updated kind of through this pointer, kind of dereference the pointer, access head, change what value it has. But unfortunately, I have not changed the fact that this node is allocated on the stack and it's going to go away as soon as the function where it was declared returns. So now the pointer that I have uh, for head is cracked. Right? It's pointing to memory that's been deallocated. Uh, and we have like maybe the bytes there will stay the same, but they could also be given to some other program. They could cause all sorts of problems when we're trying to use this, this memory that's been deallocated. So we can't get away with, alloc with allocating uh, data on the stack if we want that data to exist outside of the function where it's being created. And this is where our heap comes in. It's going to have to be manual, done by the programmer, um, rather than automatic. Uh, and it's also dynamic in the sense that we don't have to know at compile time how much we need to allocate. For example, we don't know, we don't have to know ahead of time how many nodes are going to be in our linked list. We can just ask the system for more memory as we go along. Uh, and aside, uh, you have seen this uh, in, in previous programming because every time you use the new keyword in Java, you are telling Java to allocate something on the heap. Um, 
So manual, dynamic, um, and for our purposes here, putting something on a heap means we, the programmer, have control over when it's deallocated. It doesn't get automatically deallocated when a function returns. So if we want something to exist kind of beyond a function call, heap allocation is what we'll need. So how do we do that? There is a function provided by C called malloc. And malloc is going to allocate a chunk of memory. It's going to return a pointer to that memory. Uh, and we have to tell malloc how many bytes we want it to, what kind of how many bytes long the chunk of memory that it's going to allocate will be. And for this, we want that chunk of memory to be however many bytes it takes to store a node. So I can use this built-in size of to ask the compiler, well, how many bytes does it take to store a node? And then I'm going to take that number and ask malloc to give me that many bytes on the heap. So here. Is size of a standard library? Uh, I, I think size of is just built in. You don't okay. need to include anything to, to use size of. Uh, now that my node is a, is a pointer, is there other other syntax that I have to change? Yeah, Trevor. Uh, you're accessing the next field. Yeah, all the times I'm ask, accessing a field, I can't use dot anymore. Uh, what should I use instead? Arrow. Yeah, exactly. I should use the arrow to access the fields, and I have a pointer to a struct. All right, so let's see what happens here. And I'm also going to make it a little more interesting and kind of add two, two nodes to my queue. Uh, the first will be fungi, and then I'll put in balloon. So let's see what this does. Yeah, look. Is there a reason we didn't change the uh, at or and and on line 19? Uh, that's going to be a bug. Thank you for catching it. Yes, when we want to assign head, we want it to be uh, the address of our node. And our node is on the heap. And our variable n is a pointer to that location. So it is the address. Of the node. Why did this compile? Why wasn't this an error? Yes. Is it still like has an address on its own? Yes. I in this case was setting head equal to the address of the local variable because the eight bytes of this pointer are still sitting on the stack, and so I was setting head equal to that address on the stack of the address of the node on the heap. Uh, and did uh, CTutor using its C compiler warn me about this? No, of course not. Like you, you know what you're doing. Uh, turns out, no. Um, all right, so let's see what it looks like. All right, we copy fungi in. We have to add. Uh, and now we see our first thing show up on the heap. I uh, malloc gave me something of uh, uh, space for a value and a next on the heap, and n is uh, the address of that, pointer to that. Uh, I set the next to null. I set the value to point to the string here that was passed in. Uh, and then I set head to point to this thing on the heap. Let's see if when the function returns. All right, this looks fine so far. Head points to the node. 
the value of the node is the string fungi. Um, but now something strange has happened. The main function is reusing this array, str, like seems reasonable that it passed in the string fungi and then you know that should have been added to the queue and now it's kind of reusing that memory. Uh, but that, that had the effect of changing the string that this node that I already added to the queue points to. Because it was just had the memory address of this stack allocated array and when that changed can kind of go through and kind of do the second add, it adds a new node, it updates the next pointer uh, of that node, updates the head, so we kind of still have a nice linked list here where the head points to this node, points to the next node, it's next is null, getting the end of the list. But both nodes, their value points to this one string here, so it we basically have balloon in the list twice instead of fungi and also balloon. So we don't quite have a working version of kind of adding to the front of this queue yet. Uh, anyone have a suggestion for how we could fix this? Okay. Should we allocate the string? Yes, we want to, the way that we make sure that every node has its own string is that we allocate separate memory for the string of each node, rather than just sort of telling the node to point to whatever memory was passed in. So what I mean by this is we're going to malloc space for the value. How many bytes do we need to allocate for, for the string that we're going to store with this node? Okay. The string weight plus one. Exactly. We can ask you use the C uh, the the library function strlin, which I think we'll have to get from string .h, um, which will tell us the number of characters in in a string. That's also how many bytes because it's one byte per character. Uh, and then where does the where does the plus one come from? Exactly. Our Sterling function doesn't count the null terminator, and so we need to make sure there's an extra byte uh, that we're allocating for that. Uh, so we allocate uh, the space, and then we can copy copy s over to to the value. Yes. So the thing about this this string length function is that it doesn't allocate to the null terminator, ter null terminator. So is the only special thing about it that it just does the dereferencing of the char star? Uh, so what uh, what alternative are you imagining to using Sterling? Or are, are you asking like should we be doing something else than, than Sterling? No, I'm wondering why I guess uh, why use Sterling instead of like size of char times? Uh, yes. Yeah. So this is this is very tempting. Uh, but what type is our parameter s? It's a pointer to a character. The size of a pointer always going to be eight. And so we actually cannot use size of to find out the length of this character array. Well, no, it wasn't size of char pointer, it was size of character. Uh, so instead of this, we would be doing size of character. Times 11. Well, how, how do we, where does 11 or come from? Size of character times length. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, if we were to dereference s, we would get just a single character, because it's a pointer to a character. Um, so, like, in order to get the length of a string, we basically need to loop through the elements of the array, kind of counting them up until we hit the null terminator, uh, which is 
all that Sterling is doing. It's just a for loop through the array until it hits an alternative. So oh, no, okay. we could we could implement that ourselves, but kind of using the built-in function is is convenient. Um, other questions on this on this code? All right, so let's just look at kind of the the final state when we um, uh, have this this uh, completed version. And go through. And now we're actually allocating an, an array of characters on the heap, since we're using malloc, um, and then copying over the string to there. And then if we skip all the way to the end, we see that this has uh, kind of given us the actual structure of this linked list that we want, where each node kind of has its own memory for the string, so they're not potentially interfering with each other. All right, does this, this make sense? Any, any other questions on uh, uh, this example? All right, the main things to kind of take away from this, uh, there's some specific kind of C syntax with like pointers and, and structs and, and type def. Um, but this also gets at why we need the heap period. Like why we couldn't do this with only only using the stack, um, and uh, the ver various problems that we run into when uh, something needs to be kind of created on the heap, uh, 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 and instead we do it on the stack. And this idea that C is passed by value, which means that if we have a struct as a parameter to a function, it's going to copy that struct. Um, Whereas what we most often wanted to do is to kind of copy a pointer to the struct. So now that we kind of both uh, we're referring to to a single single instance of that of that struct. Go. Yeah. Um, it's fun to figure out what the name is, right? So technically, wise, what we could have done instead of like um, passing the a pointer to head within to that, right? If we could have allocated the um, we could have allocated the pointer to the string outside, inside main, and then inside of add, do string copy into the pointer we have there. That would have also worked, right? Uh, so I think we still need each node to have its own copy of the string. Like we, we need the memory for uh, uh, the, the string for the first node to be separate from the memory of the string of the second node. Um, so I don't think there's any way to do that without kind of allocating that space at the same time we're, we're allocating each node. Other questions? All right. So I would like to uh, now tell you about the first declared war in U.S. history. Um, uh, throughout the early 19th century, um, there was a, a fellow, you might have heard of him, uh, uh, one uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, who was a uh, uh, French general, then the first consul of France, uh, and then crowned himself emperor of France, and uh, Napoleon liked to uh, go around conquering countries in Europe. Uh, other countries in Europe did not like this. Um, uh, this includes uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the UK, uh, Great Britain. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, Great Britain was, was trying to do was trying to prevent Americans from trading with France. And they were also uh, 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 taking Americans uh, and forcing them to serve in the British Navy in some cases. Uh, 
And this led, uh, under um, uh, President James Madison, for the U.S. to declare war on, on Great Britain. And there's kind of fighting uh, throughout North America. Uh, uh, Native Americans fought on, on both sides of the war. And um, one of the things that happened was that uh, the British invaded Washington, D.C., burned down the White House. Uh, burned part of the U.S. Capitol, which is what is what is shown here. And there are some other other pictures from the conflict. Here is a painting of of this uh, uh, mortally wounded general um, urging on his his troops. Uh, a famous uh, naval battle um, uh, and some some other. Uh, Andrew Jackson appears uh, appears here. Um, Andrew Jackson was catapulted to, to national fame when he, he led uh, the defense of New Orleans um, and repelled a British attack. Uh, this was actually after the war had ended, after the peace treaty had been signed, but news of the peace treaty had not traveled across the Atlantic. Um, and so this famous battle was fought, and Andrew Jackson would go on to, uh, to be uh, president of the US, um, but from a battle that occurred after the war had ended. All right, that's our, our US history facts. So let's do a little practice with uh, struct syntax. I have four, let me turn off, nope, there we go. I have four uh, different ways of defining a struct to represent a two-dimensional point. Uh, think about which of these uh, would be would make for a good definition. Uh, some votes for all four different options. So please uh, discuss with your your neighbor how you thought about uh, defining a, a 2D point struct. So some movement uh, towards C, maybe. Uh, but actually, I think B will be uh, our best option here. Uh, someone uh, share with us your, your thinking about uh, B versus C. Yeah. I don't know if this is like a reasonable thought process, but I was like, we'll see would work, but it's maybe like not necessary because you're already going to be like allocating the struct itself on the piece. Yeah, I, I think that's a perfect way to think about it. That just to kind of draw a picture of each of these. In B, we have Uh, a kind of single chunk of memory that has two ints in it. Uh, how many total bytes uh, would this chunk of memory be? Eight. Yeah, four for each of the ints, that gives us eight bytes. And C, we have again x and y, but these are pointers to integers. Uh, and so we would need both these two pointers and then also memory for the two integers. Uh, and so how many bytes would all of this together? 24. 24. Yeah, 8 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4 is 24 bytes. Um, and I'm not sure that I see any sort of advantage to kind of anything that we're getting for this extra memory here versus what we would get with the ints just being inside the struct. Does that make sense? Any questions on this? Yeah. So when you malloc for a point, those mm -hmm. integers <clears throat> are also malloc, basically? Okay. Yeah, we would do like malloc size of struct point. And uh, the size of uh, the size of struct point, which we just went through, uh, in this case would be kind of eight bytes. And so we'd say all we're telling Malik is give me a chunk of memory on the heap that is eight bytes in size. 
and then it's up to the program to kind of use that eight bytes in some particular way. Uh, and if we've told the program that we're using those eight bytes as like type struct point, then it's going to use the first four as the X field and the next four as Y. So yeah, so anything that's kind of inside the, the, field, the fields of the struct, that's going to be kind of part of the chunk of memory that we allocate. Uh, but if those fields are pointers, we allocate the space for the address, but then separately we would need space for it to actually point to. Other questions? All right, so that, um, I think what we'll uh, uh, do next is a little more practice with C. I want to make sure that we're all uh, get as much practice with this uh, going into to lab zero as we can. So what I have here, it's uh, a little is some C code. And uh, is this visible in the, in the back? Awesome. So uh, this is broken C code. There are a number of compiler errors that occur when I try and compile this code. Uh, and uh, there are, um, uh, I've noted the four lines where a compiler error occurs along with what that error is. Uh, so 12, 13, 16, and 17 all have compiler errors. In addition to those four compiler errors, uh, there are two potential runtime errors. And there's like two flaws with this code that may cause uh, issues uh, uh, during runtime. So I'd like you to uh, uh, take about 10 minutes, uh, maybe sooner if, if people finish up, but uh, work with your neighbors on kind of figuring out what these compiler and compile time and runtime errors are and what you might do uh, to fix them. I'll be wandering around uh, if you have questions. Uh, All right, let's see talk about uh, this, this uh, buggy piece of code. Uh, so someone uh, share what is what is the problem on line 12 here? Yeah. Yeah, this, this error is saying like it, it thinks I'm going to declare a variable here because it's just a type and, and nothing else. Um, and so I, yes, I need to pass my luck an integer kind of number of bytes rather than just like putting in a, a type. Nick? Is there a, like what happens and or why would anyone type cast the malloc call here? Uh, so this is not necessary. It's just a style thing. Ah. Um, so malloc returns a void star. If I don't have a cast, that void star will be automatically and silently converted into whatever type root is here. Um, which is fine in this case, that's what I want. But in putting these casts in, it can guard against a kind of error. Or what if I was just like not paying attention uh, and I got um, and I got these backwards? Now, if I got these backwards without the cast, let me. If I got these backwards without this typecast, this line does not get an error because it's like, sure, I can convert the void star that Malik's returning into a car star. Uh, and so by putting the cast there, the compiler can catch if the type I'm expecting this to be assigned to doesn't match the type that it actually is. So it's kind of a minor style thing. I left it out of the previous example just to keep the code simpler. Um, but you, you will see that this is a pretty common, common pattern. Uh, other questions on this, this first line? All right, how about line 13? What's 
someone else share with us the, the problem going on here? Kevin? I think you need to do root equal equal null. Not be reference. Exactly. The, um, uh, the, the error uh, tells us that root that we're trying to compare something that's a no t to null rather than, and null has type void star. Like all that null is, is the value zero cast to a pointer, um, which is helpful because it catches problems like this. Because capital null is a void star type, it will realize that this expression has a problem, where if it was just zero with no type information about the zero, then like C wouldn't think that this line was a problem. Um, so null is helpful in that way. Uh, we get rid of the star, we're comparing the actual memory address to null, not trying to dereference that memory address. Um, it's also crucial that we don't dereference the memory address that could be null, because if we dereference it and it is null, the program will crash. Uh, all right, so we've solved these two. Uh, how about line 16 and, and 17? Anyone else want to explain these to us, Sophia? Uh, fine. Uh, it's the it's the same thing that we just did, right? Because that's a pointer, and that's not gonna it can't be compared to null. Exactly. We uh, we want to assign something to uh, uh, to this left field. We want to assign null to the left field, uh, not um, uh, not dereference it. Um, all right. So that takes care of our compiler errors. Uh, how about our, one of our, our runtime errors? Uh, on line 21, we uh, access the value to a value through root, but we just tried to create root, which would be an issue, so we could reverse the line. Exactly. That in, in our C tutor example, when something got deallocated, it sort of disappeared. Um, unfortunately, that's not what actually happens. What happens is when we deallocate, when we reference freed memory, we get undefined behavior. Maybe it will work fine, maybe it will crash, maybe we'll do something weird because the data there has changed since we freed it. Um, uh, and so it's, it's very important to never access freed memory. And so I was sort of, when we're freeing a struct uh, that has kind of in it itself pointers to the heap, we sort of need to free it from the inside out. Uh, and uh, this highlights another point that when we're thinking about uh, managing memory manually in C, uh, there, uh, um, there's a, a great point on the, on the check-in form uh, that we can think of malloc and free as kind of matching brackets or parentheses, that there, we need to have a corresponding free for every call to malloc. So by the time the program ends, we've kind of freed everything that we asked the system to allocate on the heap. Um, final runtime problem here. Becca? Um, in line 18, you're only allocating like the size of a single character when you need to do what we did before with like the length of the string plus one. Exactly. So this size of char, we're just going to get one byte. And so our stir copy going to kind of copy characters past the end of this one byte that we've allocated. And again, could be fine, could end in disaster. Undefined behavior. All right, that's all we have time for today. Remember the quiz and the check-in post. I have office hours tomorrow evening in the Olin Computer Lab, and I'll see you next day.